What's up, sons? It's Blind Drive with Savatech once again, and today we have yet another how-to video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077 and how to improve the performance in the game, specifically in relation to SMT and HT, uh, respectively. That stands for simultaneous multi-threading on AMD platforms and hyper-threading on Intel platforms. Currently, the game is actually not supporting those hyper-threaded and simultaneous multi-threaded cores or threads. Let's be specific. Cores would be physical, threads would be, you know, virtual. And what we need to do is unlock that so that we can get more performance. We've confirmed it working so far on an RX 580, RX 5600 XT, RX 5700 XT, RX 6800, RTX 3070, and the GTX 1063 gig, which with this fix, of course, will uh, resolve, <laughs> you know, actually get you playable on a 1063 gig, which is pretty incredible. Additional to that is that the performance increase will be purely dependent on the CPU you currently own. The most improvement will be seen in older Ryzen platforms, so Ryzen Zen 1, Zen 2, and that sort of thing. So we're talking about the Ryzen 5 2600, the Ryzen 5 3600, and the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1600 AF. That being said, on this particular system, we are running the Ryzen 5 5600X, and even with that processor, which is brand new and has some of the best single-threaded performance out right now, uh, we still saw a huge performance increase. So let's hop into the demo. Okie dokie. So, first things first is we're going to open MSI Afterburner. This will be in a separate video, but if you open MSI Afterburner, just by opening it, you're going to reduce a lot of performance issues in Cyberpunk. And that's because Cyberpunk, over time, seems to decrease the core and memory clocks. And so, if you have MSI Afterburner open, what I do here is, like you see, we have just a plus one on each of the core and the memory. And that actually has resolved a ton of issues in town uh, around Night City and cleaning it up so that basically we aren't having those big dips. For whatever reason, the optimization there is poor and I've seen that across every GPU. Pascal seems to be a little bit better on the lower end, so the 1063 gig seems to maintain its clock. I think that's just because no matter what settings the game is on, it's pushing that card to its limits. So the big performance gains and boosts from actually opening Afterburner here is going to be on your newer GPUs, so, you know, or your more powerful GPUs. Uh, biggest difference I saw it on was the AMD cars, the 5700 XT and the RX 6800. But today we're talking about simultaneous multi-threading. Let me show you the problem and then I'll show you the fix. So as we load in, I want you to pay attention to a few things up in the top left left hand corner. Reva Tuner Statistics is currently tracking the CPU usage, total CPU usage, and the GPU usage. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to both of those very closely. Our core clock and memory clock, because we have Afterburner open with a slight overclock applied, is should not move even in the load screens. Whereas like if we were in the load screens without that applied, you would see that fluctuating, right? That being said, let's get into the game. We are doing the demonstration on the RTX 3070, and that's because it is most noticeable on the setting ray tracing medium and for demonstration purposes, so you guys can see exactly what's happening, I decided to use this graphics card because it is much more noticeable in the charts up in the top left. So we're gonna go ahead and load that benchmark that we used for our benchmark runs when we were testing the 3070 and the 6800, which you can also check out on this channel, and we'll show you what's going on. So right off the bat, what you'll notice is that we're sitting between uh, somewhere between 50 to 60% usage on the CPU and somewhere between 88% and 95% on the GPU. Keeping in mind, DLSS does affect this more. And what you'll notice here in just a little bit when we perform the fix is that we'll have less noise and DLSS won't be near as demanding as it currently is on the system as far as like reducing your texture quality here. So as you can see, we got a lot of noise and so on. Uh, in the more demanding sections, you can see there our GPU usage dropping to 84, 83%, 82%. I've seen it drop as low as 60% in some sections in the game, which can be a huge hit to your frame rate. And this is once again, just on every GPU. So let's get into the fix. 
what you're going to want to do is quit the game. And then I have some basic steps here that will be in the description as well as a link to the original article that I found on video cards. And there's a huge shout out to Adored TV, uh, who is another fellow YouTuber, much better, much larger than me for good reason, because he finds stuff like this pretty amazing. So what are you going to need to do? First, you're going to need to open your file explorer and locate the Cyberpunk 27, Cyberpunk 2077 executable. To do this, uh, you're basically going to go for Steam into your Steam library, Steam apps, and Common, and then find the game folder. For Epic, you'd go into Epic and then find the game folder. And for GOG, you'd go into GOG and find the game folder. We're on Steam right now, so this demo will be in Steam. If you have trouble locating it on any of the other platforms, please let us know in Discord, and I'll try to help you locate where this executable is. But for Steam, it's going to be Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, and then, of course, Cyberpunk 2077. Once you've found the game folder, you're going to be going into Bin, and then X64, and then here is your Cyberpunk 2077 executable. My suggestion is to just right click and copy and paste to the desktop. We're gonna go ahead and replace that one. And then once it's pasted to the desktop, what you're gonna do is just right click, rename, and remove the .exe and just put in .back. Now, if you don't have the option to edit, of course, your file extensions, you'll want to go into your Cortana search bar and search for File Explorer Options. You're going to open File Explorer Options and click View. You're going to scroll down to the box that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types, uncheck it, and click Apply. At that time, you'll be able to edit the extension to dot .back. And this is the file that we will place back in here if something goes awry while we are editing. The next thing you're going to need to do is open a browser and search for HXD Hex Editor. You will navigate to the website, scroll down, and find the download page for the Windows 10 version right here, released on February 28, 2020. Uh, find you know the closest region you're in and go ahead and download per HTTPS. If it is not secure, do not download anything from the page. You probably ended up on the wrong page. I will link this downloads in the description below. Be sure you navigate there. Be sure you don't get fished. Make sure you're not grabbing a bad file. It will report, of course, that there are, uh, it could be a virus. So you'll have to do the whole keep things or run anyway at least for the hex editor. And that's pretty common across the board for anything that is editing executables, right? Because that can be used maliciously. In this case, we won't be using it maliciously. So now we're gonna go down to file. I presume at this point you have installed the application. If you have issues installing the application, you can also hit that link for Discord. So now that we have HXD open, we're just gonna kind of put these two side by side. In File Explorer, we're going to drag the Cyberpunk 2077.exe over into the hex editor, and boom, now we can edit. Going down to the description, you're going to go down to step six, and you're going to highlight the hex code and do a control C or a right click and copy. Then you're going to go to your hex editor and do a control F to initiate a find. Make sure you select hex values, and in the search, you will do a control V or right click and paste and click search all. At this point, you're gonna go to back to the description in the video and you're going to find the step seven, copy the hex code from step seven with a control C or a right click and copy. You're then going to go into the hex editor at HXD you're going to right click the string of code that we found and click paste insert. Once you've done this, you're going to click the save button or control S alternatively. So now we are ready to show you guys what it did. Let's boot up Cyberpunk. Alrighty, so we are just going to load our benchmark again. Click space to continue. 
And at this point, you will already notice our CPU utilization has gone from 50 to 60% to 70 to 80%, and our GPU usage is now staying above 90%. Additionally, yes, the frame rate has improved, but not by that much. The reason for that is we're playing on the RTX 3070 with DLSS start stay set at auto, excuse me. With the LSS set at auto though, you should be able to already, if you're doing this on your system with a ray trace supported card, notice that there's less noise in the assets and the texture resolutions do seem to be quite a bit better. And you get an additional benefit of, you know, what is it, 13, 10 to 20 frames per second. We'll be running benchmarks on this method and trying to test it with additional Ryzen CPUs as well as Intel CPUs. We have a 10900K we can test on as well. And I hope this is all beneficial. So, thanks everybody for watching. If the video is helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Go check out videocards.net and their original article, as well as check out Adored TV for his analysis on this issue and this topic as well. Once again, make sure that if you're having issues later in the game as the game is going on, that you check your core clock and go ahead and force it to stay at the advertised speed. In the case of the 3070, you want to be above 1900 megahertz or something is going awry there. Okie doke, I'll see you next Tuesday.